Okay, before we head down the beach, I'll just explain what crick and cricking is, because a lot of you out there won't actually know what that what that is. So cricks are basically the crevices and holes that you find amongst the rocks down on the beach. And cricking is basically getting a hook like this and going in the hole and getting out like the abalone, the lobsters, crab, that kind of thing. Now basically this is just a hook. This is an ormering hook. We call it an ormering hook. You could say a foraging hook as well, but basically this is designed for ormers or abalone. It's a six mil bar. It's been bent over at the end here, obviously. You don't want too big a curve in it. You want to keep it as small as you can. And the hook is rounded as to not damage like the abalone in particular or any other thing like any other sea life. It's flattened a little bit so you can get it under the shell of an abalone and the back edge has been flattened off so it's tapered off not too sharp though you don't want them sharp because you don't want to cut the foot of abalone so it's just rounded off a little bit flat so when you push you can push it under the foot and make the abalones drop off in the cricks now you keep these as small as possible which is you can see there that's only what an inch or so that one yeah, a little bit bigger than an inch and yeah the idea of that is because some of the holes that you go in um you want to be able to get round the back of a lobster or get round the ormer and the cricks and holes that these animals go in sometimes is very very tight and there's no room to maneuver and so if you can get a hook through past the animal and pull him out gently he'll cause less damage now mine is just bent over like that with the gauge on for the ormer it's also got cuts in the back of the gauge just in case i come across a lobster like that, like that just so i know the sizes that i'm taking are over the legal size limit it's bent over. Now you see some hooks, they put wooden handles on. I don't put wooden handles on mine because some of the tight gaps you go in, you, you've got to get the hook in, there's rocks in the way and, and anything too bulky just gets in the way. So I like to keep it like this. And this is the way I've always had them and I've never had a problem with them. This is a steel bar. Some people make them out stainless. I use steel simply because, I mean, this, this thing's about 30 odd years old and it goes every year. So it's, you know, it lasts as long as you wash them hang them up in the shed afterwards, they're fine. Right, let's get back down the beach and do some cricking. Right, well, we're back on the beach again, and we're going to be looking around for abalone, lobsters, whatever we can find again. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes that, um, yeah, sometimes you get a lobster in where you are, Ben, in those holes there. You can normally tell because they've dug it out when you find them in there. But that is a lobster hole, one of the lobster holes around here. down where we want to go it's a long walk out here but uh, we've only found a couple of small undersized ones so far you haven't had any yet no only, only baby ones so we're going to keep going the tide's got to go down a long way yet so hopefully when it gets a bit lower we'll find some just checking the dugout hole Probably left before the tide went, or left yesterday when it dried. So I thought I'd show you this, just came across it. Could be one of the biggest starfish ever. Look at the size of that. That is enormous. Let's uh, take it over here and have a closer look at it. Now, there's my waders. Size tens, so give you a bit more of an idea. But that is a big big starfish one of the biggest i've come across right let's put them back out in the water right there's a nice one just in the water i don't know if you can see that one it's down in the crevice down there 
there we go you can tell how mottled that shell is absolute cracker that one biggest one so far today right so just found another one which is in here it might be size it's sort of right on the border on it find out oh actually it's bigger than i thought so Actually, that's got a long shell, so that will be size, I reckon. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Is this size? Yep, that's a legal one. That's two, I think, isn't it? Two, three, two, I think. Yeah, two. one now we're starting to get into a few so not, uh... Second one, if I don't use it, it's an awful one. This Jumbo, absolute jumbo that one. There we go. That's what I like to see under a rock. <laughs> Lots of almonds like that. Yeah, beauties, eh? Gram puppy. That was a nice one. Yeah. Right, so we had a quick battery change and just walked over here back this way. And look at that lot. There's at least three in that crevice. Large ones. Just shows how easy it is to walk past them. Try and get it out now. 
is the challenge. some damage to it but it'll be getting cooked up later so. right. another one let's do it quickly so it doesn't clamp down and then there's one more three of them that's the smallest about a centimeter over just lifted this rock up got that many warmers there might be small look at that congreal We'll get him in the water and he can find his way. There he goes. Ooh, he wants to come out of the water. Say it's too small. Yeah, we're just done. So we'll put that one back. There is one under here, but he's. Oh, could you get up there? The rock's too big to lift. Stronger than I thought I was. Huh. Two more. Look at the colour of that. I don't know if you can pick that up, but the colour of that, the purple on that is insane. 
Well, another three, and they are the maximum size warmers. There's a couple of them. The armoring is insane today with the abalone hunting. Considering how much has been turned, I wasn't expecting to find much at all. Well, I was hoping to get sort of a dozen to 20, but this is insane. Warming at its finest. I mean, this is the best I've seen it for years. Right. I suppose we better move. I'll have to find the others soon as well because I'm sort of out here on my own. Now I've left my hook further over, so can I get it without the hook? Uh, probably not. Grab that. Well, got him out the hole, and he was a giant. So. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. It's about as big as they get, really. A little bit bigger, maybe, but... I think we're going to make our way back now. That's a bit of a record breaker there. <laughs> Absolute monster that one. Yeah. Right. Purple seems to be the colour of the day. Look. Look at that one. So there they are, nice batch of ormers and some scallops as well. So all in all, uh, another good trip. Now, today is the next day. Um, this was obviously yesterday we went. And today is actually another legal trip I could we could go down. We did consider it originally, but the fact that we've done so well the last couple of trips uh, we're not going to bother. We got more than enough yesterday and the day before, so we don't need any more. And this trip is probably going to be, I, would say, I wouldn't say the last one. We probably will go down maybe once or twice again, just to have a quick look around. But, you know, I like to do a few trips each year. And we've done so well with these trips that we don't really need to go much more. Next time, we'll probably just go looking for lobsters and that like we did last time. Or just for a mooch, maybe even see if we can get some prawns or razor fish, that sort of thing. But um, no, it's been a very successful trip. And you may have noticed in the video, I was kind of alone a lot on that video, in that particular video shot. What happened was, we kind of split our ways. Everybody sort of went over to one area, and I took a huge gamble to go over to another area. Now this area hasn't done that well, and it's a little bit further away, and didn't want to drag everybody across there because I wasn't sure if it, it would hold anything, because the last few years it hasn't been good. So I took the gamble and the gamble paid off and I did really well there. I, I mean, they were everywhere. As you saw in the video, I was just picking them up everywhere. So that was fantastic. And yeah, so now we're going to um, take some of these and hopefully try out putting them in tempura batter. Now, I've never done that before with these. It's just a new thing. I thought, well, the lobster in tempura worked really well. So I thought, let's try, let's try abalone sometime. So I'm going to give that a go. Right, so we've got um, the ones we did in tempura batter, which are here. We've also got, we've had some left over, so we did those as they are. The warmer was just sliced up. 
into smaller pieces and we've got a couple of scallops which was left over. Yes. So, uh, should we go with tempura first? I think we should, yes. Help yourself. That big one on the top. I'm going to try that one. Ready? Here we go. Oh yeah, tender. Tender, yeah. Mmm. Well, that surprises me. So, let me try. This is a normal one. It's a really good one, though. Mm. Um, it's pretty tender, but I'm going to say that that's tender. Yeah, itself. I mean, because we did think that the batter might cook long before the orma was going mm. to be tender, but no. Oh, yeah. Mm. We've just created something new here. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, they're on a par, but I mean, if you like your batter, that's going to be the one. Yeah. I'll try another one in case it was a lucky one, but that was definitely tender. Yeah, well, I suppose they would vary, wouldn't they? Some of them would vary. But... This is the skirt of the Orma. You can tell it, though. From... Yeah, you can see it there. Mm. Slightly more chewier. But the thing is with the skirt of the Orma, it's the outer edge part of the Orma. And it's always tougher. It's got like a band around it. It is yeah. a lot tougher. The centre is always the softest part. Mm. That's why when you hammer them, you pay particular attention to the edge. To yeah, because I don't know if you've already said, but these have actually been tenderised mm. first as well, like normal. No, I'll say that's an absolute win. Mm. I'll try a tiny bit of scallop as well, just to see the comparison. Mm. That piece is the row there, I think. So. Now, the scallop has a very sweet taste. It comes across that sweetness. Mm. So the kind of Orma is like a, it's not a scallop at all, but it has a um, an idea. If you take the sweetness away and add in a bit more of a change. Yeah, it's the texture. Mm. It's the texture that's similar to the scallop. Mm. Mm. You can see that's very sweet. Oh, it is. It's almost it? like dessert, mm. that. Mm. So what you want to start with, a bit of lobster, a bit of crab, right? Throw in some Ormas. And then finish off with the dessert, which is the scallop, and then you've got a perfect meal. That's it, perfect yeah. meal, definitely. <clears throat> anyway, it worked out really well. I'm, I'm, I really do like the tempura. It seems everything in tempura is brilliant. But, um, yeah. and I think if you're a younger viewer as well, that's going to be your thing. That is. Oh, that is, yeah. Because yeah. when I was a kid, I used to love the fried orma, but as I got older, I prefer the yes. casserole orma. But that, that takes it to another level. Yeah, I, mean. I think so. Mm. I, I can't see anybody not enjoying that, mm. to be honest. That's it. Right, anyway. We'll uh, catch you on the next video.